going to be doing today is we're starting unit five, which is chemical kinetics. And kinetics is essentially reaction rates, how fast a chemical reaction happens. And so we're going to do some really preliminary stuff here today. So we've got some definitions. So kinetics is the study of reaction rates. And a reaction rate is the change in concentration, or molarity if you will, of a reactant or product over time. Because a rate is something that's measured over time. And so we're going to measure molarities over time. And there's a variety of ways you can measure these concentrations. Um, one way is if it's a colored solution, you could use a spectrophotometer to measure concentrations over time. You could use a conductivity tester. You could use a pH meter if it's a reaction that produces uh, acids or bases or consumes them during the reaction. There's lots of different ways you can measure rates. We'll use a couple of them in this class. Uh, the thing about rates is that they are stoichiometrically related. So let's consider the following reaction. Let's consider a hypothetical reaction of 2A plus B makes C. So if B is consumed at 0 0.4 molarity per minute, then A is consumed at 0 0.8 molarity per minute because it has a coefficient of two in front of it. So for every B, you use two A's. So A gets consumed at twice the rate as B. And then since B and C have the same coefficients, then C is produced at 0 0.4 molarity per minute. And in fact, if we were to draw a graph where we measure time on the x-axis and we measure molarity on the y-axis. Um, if we were graphing the concentration or the molarity of B, and molarity is represented in chemistry concentrations by putting them in square brackets. So for B, its concentration might drop something like that. If we're looking at the concentration of A, its concentration is going to drop uh, twice as fast. And if we look at C, its concentration is going to start appearing or being produced. Right? So, the B and C, they kind of look like inverses of each other because B is being consumed, C is being produced at the exact same rates. And then A, at any point along this line, its slope should be twice at that of B. Now, our next unit, which, well, not our next unit, uh, unit uh, seven is chemical equilibrium, where we're going to talk about where you end up over here in this area, we're focusing on these initial rates or how fast things are changing. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with calculus, you'll know that essentially uh, the rate of the reaction, it's the slope of the line at a given point. Um, and that term is called the derivative. Um, and the slope of this line is the exact, is pretty much the mirror image of that one for B and C. So uh, the other thing is that rates change as the reaction proceeds. So this part, uh, that's where the slope of the line is not constant. It starts to level off. And what we are concerned with in AP chemistry is the instantaneous rate, which is the rate at a specific point 
in time. It's the slope of the line tangent to the curve. And really it's initial rates that we talk about. So a couple more things, measuring rates. So rates have to be described in terms of change of concentration of a reactant or a product. For instance, I'm talking about how fast B is consumed, A is consumed, C is produced. And in this case, I chose molarity per minute. You can measure it over seconds or hours or days, depending on how fast this reaction happens. And the rate of a reaction depends upon several factors, temperature, surface area, and concentration, right? So temperature, if you increase the temperature, particles move faster, the reaction will happen faster. Surface area, if you increase the surface area by taking a large chunky solid and you grind it up into a powder, the reaction will happen faster because the particles can physically interact to happen. We'll talk about collision theory later. The particles have to physically contact each other. The A's and the B's in this reaction have to physically come into contact with each other to make the reaction happen. So if you increase the surface area, that can happen faster. If you increase the concentration, the molarities, you're increasing the odds that they will bump into each other and the reaction will happen faster. Uh, the other thing that does come into play is reversible reactions because as the reaction starts proceeding in the forward direction, if it's reversible, that's going to affect the perceived rate of the reaction. Um, it, it gets a little bit uh, interesting when we get into the reversible reaction. So what we do is we measure what are called the initial rates where the reverse reaction isn't really significant. Because if we start with just A and B in a flask together and we're trying to make C, well, if there is no C to start with, then even if this reaction were reversible, well, it's not going to matter in the very early stages. If we just focus on this little section right here, because there is no, uh, there is no C present at the beginning for us to worry about it. Right? So that's where, we typically use what's called a method of initial rates. Now, tomorrow we will talk a lot more about what all of this means.